So yesterday I cut this lidded piece apart and my video cut out before I got the chance to point out. See how the rim is, or the, the um, attachment here is cracking a little bit? Um, that's probably because I picked it up when it was wet, um, because I was lifting it to, to take the lid off. Um, handles and uh, attachments and stuff like that don't generally do well when they're under pressure. Now, it's not a huge deal. I can use um, something like a rubber tool a rubber tip tool to smooth this, or my finger if I can get a finger in there. I, I just had a little bit of water on my rubber tip. Um, I don't want, like I've said before, I don't want to add a ton of water because it can make my clay, um, the clay can absorb that water and it can start to break up, right? It can start to slake or it can start to, well, it's not slaking at this point, but it absorbs that water and it can cause it to become a little bit weaker. Uh, but I can go in and one of the one of the things when you have cracks is in some way you want to add some pressure. You want to be, and so I'm just kind of pushing on that surface. And I've got a little extra slip now because I've created it essentially with the end of the rubber tip. And that can help fill that in as well. I can also, if I've got a big crack going on, I can add some clay and make sure that I press that into that space. I had you all make your slip with water. So you used bone dry clay and you added water. There is another type of slip that I didn't have you make that you are welcome to make, but it's stinky, and that is a vinegar slip. And so if you take clay and instead, or bone dry clay, and instead of adding water, you add um, just a little bit of vinegar, um, it'll be a stinky slip, but it'll be a little bit stronger slip. We don't keep it in the studio because it just gets gross, right? You have to smell that. Okay, so I've, I've repaired that edge a little bit, and then I've got... The, these cutouts that I did, and my clay has shifted a little bit, so I'm going to want to fix that. I'm going to want to pull back in those places where it doesn't quite want to fit quite right. And then the other thing you'll notice is that um, the edges are a bit rough. And so I do want to come back in with a finger, a wet finger, a wet chamois, a tool. You got lots and lots of options here. Um, and I just want to kind of clean that up a little bit. Sometimes if that edge there is, is uh, the inside edge is real rough, I will actually take and cut a little bit of that off, just like that. Um, or you can use something like a rubber tip tool or your carving tool, your Kemper carving tool, um, or even one of those wooden tools in your set. And you can cut away or press away some of that extra uh, extra clay. So this is going to take me a while. Um, I mean, it'll take me, you know, spending carefully spending time on it and not also looking at a camera screen. This is going to take me, you know, 10 or 15 minutes to clean up this edge and this edge and then make sure everything fits. Oops, <laughs> not that way. Make sure everything fits right. And I want to dry these two together. So rule of thumb for drying stuff. If you built it, if you made it in one day, you made it in one sitting, and now it's ready to go, it can just be left out to dry. If you made it in two sittings, like I'm going to do here, you need to let it dry for two days. So keep it wrapped for an extra day. It never hurts you to let stuff dry longer. Um, so, you know, go for it. And you sometimes also come back to it and realize, you know what, I wanted to make a little adjustment on there. So the other thing I wanted to show you in this video was adding some height. So I had shown you how to add some height using the just pinch method, but this piece has gotten kind of dry. And so I'm not gonna be able to squish clay onto here. You see what happens? The inside one doesn't wanna squish with me. I can't drag it. And so this ends up coming off. So what I've done is I've scored up that edge I'm gonna add a little slip, and slip, if you have a choice, the slip should be added onto the drier side. So if they're both the same amount of wet, you, it doesn't matter, but if one of them is drier, you should add it onto the drier side. And then I'm gonna score up this coil, so I rolled out a coil um, before, and so here I'm kinda combining pinch and coil methods. We will do coil methods separately later, and so really here I'm just using it as sort of an add-on to this technique. Um, potters who work with clay a lot um, generally don't end up having like, okay, this is the only technique I ever use and I never combine techniques. So this is a way to add some height and I'm gonna, I've scored and slipped and that's gonna help me secure this onto here. I'm also gonna smooth it down because I'll make sure you can see what I'm doing. I just wanna smooth it down so that it looks nice. I may come back to it later, but right now I'm just kind of getting it attached there. 
But what I've done now is I've added wet clay on top of the, uh, the, the leather hard clay, the clay that had dried up for a, couple, a day or two. And now I can continue working in a pinch method. And so I could continue working in a coil method or I could continue working in the pinch method. And now you can see, at least on the inside, um, that these are gonna smooth together okay, right? And I'm, I haven't cleaned it up on the outside quite as much as I need to, which is why I'm hiding that side from you right now. Um, but I can continue to build this piece up that way, or I can continue to build it up with the coil. So um, how to stick clay together. Anytime, any kind of clay you're talking about. If it's wet enough and you're using pressure to push, you know, you're pushing the parts together, you can get away with just adding wet clay to wet clay. If you have leather hard and you're adding wet, or if the two pieces are leather hard that you're trying to join, or if you're not planning to push them together, smooth them together much, sort of like I did on the lid of this guy, you want to score and slip. So scoring, scratching it up, However you do that, your tool that you should have is this one, but you might supplement that with a variety of other tools. Um, if you are in a pinch and you didn't get this yet, you can use any other tool that can make a mark to score. But you can see that scoring this way is gonna take me a week, right? Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, which is why I recommend you get a tool that speeds it up for you. It's not, you know, say it functions the same way, it just is this time you spend. So this piece here, um, I am going to continue working on. Again, I'm showing you a bunch of techniques really quick, which ends up making it look like I'm sloppy. Um, but uh, if I spend some more time on this, it's gonna be boring because I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing. What I'm gonna end up with could be something like this. So this one is a pinch, uh, pinch built form. Um, this is an artist in uh, Montana, I think. Um, and this piece, you can see how very, very smooth it is. You can see a few little bumps and things like that, but the smoothness on the outside is from this artist using a uh, metal rib, the smooth metal rib, not this one, um, bringing her hand up the side, using a chamois on the rim. And then these little lines, she's actually carved into the clay very lightly when it was, uh, before it was dry. And then later on, she put glaze into those little lines. So that's how she got that decoration technique. That can be something built into the piece.